Hey everybody and welcome to Breaking Biotech, the podcast where we get into all different things biotechnology related. My name is Matt and thank you all very much for joining me. Today I want to talk about Prothena. Uh, I was seeing the company a bunch in the news all week this week based on the Celgene collaboration, so I thought I'd take some time and dive into the company a little bit more and see if there's an opportunity here. Uh, did want to check up on the older uh, videos or updates, I guess, on, on some of the older stuff I did before we get into Prothena. And uh, before we do any of that, I just want to say, uh, if you could please subscribe or like the video, it would really help me out as, uh, as I try to grow this thing bigger and bigger. So uh, if anybody was looking at Madrigal uh, over the last week, we, we saw it. Oh, I don't have it up, but the, the company actually dropped to like 109, 108. And, uh, and finally, I think it closed the week at 115. So it didn't seem like there was any news. Just in general, the markets weren't doing very well. So I have the, uh, the total biotech sector up here, actually. So yeah, pretty bearish week for biotech overall. Um, I, didn't, uh, I didn't buy any, any Madrigal uh, when, when the opportunity arose. And today, actually, I'm recording this on Friday the 23rd. Uh, it shot up to, to about 120 and then settled back at, at 115 for close. So it's just the volatility of biotech in general. I don't think there's anything to worry about there. Um, it looks like though the entire markets are, are selling off right now. So if you're thinking about opening any positions, it might be worth it to, to wait and see how the market decides to settle itself out given the, the new tariffs that have been added in the US and, uh, and other sorts of uncertainty that's, that's going on. So um, other than that though, you know, this gives us a good opportunity to look into potential uh, companies that have, have value. So the other thing I wanted to mention is Adamas, ADMS. So that I did a video on that uh, a few weeks ago now. And uh, the company, so pretty much I've decided that I'm going to wait and see how their earnings reports look until the end of this year. So uh, just to catch you up a little bit, they have a drug, Gokovri, that's a long-acting uh, adamantine. Uh, drug for um, uh, Parkinson disease, levodopa induced dyskinesia. And uh, another company called Osmotica has an Osmolex ER, which is a similar kind of drug, but it doesn't have an actual indication for levodopa induced dyskinesia. So there's a little uncertainty in whether or not uh, uh, physicians are going to use the actual Adamas drug or they're going to use an off label um, Osmotica drug. So Pretty much, I'm, uh, you know, if if Adamas can actually fulfill their, um, fulfill what they want to do in, in marketing the drug and getting it to doctors and patients, then I think they'll be fine. And uh, we're only going to see that once they update us as the earnings reports come out. So in this next earnings reports, if they don't start to deliver on, on what they said, then uh, I'm probably just going to sell. But I'm going to give them up until the end of the year before I make that call. And, uh, but you know, th so it's looking more and more risky that stock, just given that this, uh, this generic on the market now, Osmotica, the Osmotica drug is, is, is a potential, uh, hurdle for Adamas reaching its, its full market share. So take that for what it is and, uh, and yeah, make, make decisions on, on your own behalf. But, oh, and just to remind everybody, this is not financial advice. Just want to make sure that that's clear. This is all just for interest sake not actual trading advice and uh, you got to do your own research for any of this stuff okay other than that uh, AI immune immune uh, didn't really make too many moves this week uh, it's around 30 bucks um, I'm happy with my position and gonna see where that goes from here but anyway so let's get into Prothena so Prothena is a antibody company pretty much I've uh, in looking at them they they make monoclonal antibodies against certain proteins and they seem to be very good at doing that so uh, for those who don't know well you should know about antibodies you should do your own research on that but a monoclonal antibody is different than a polyclonal antibody in that it recognizes only one epitope of a protein so this allows very specific binding to a protein uh, which is good if you have a protein misfolding disease or any sort of disorder where uh, proteins aren't doing what you want them to do and you want them to be removed. So what this company has done is they've uh, figured out a way to make these monoclonal antibodies against certain protein aggregates. And protein aggregate diseases are very 
uh, common. They affect people when it comes to different neurodegenerative diseases or um, those are the big ones. But the, the other ones that they have is this AL amyloidosis, which is another protein aggregate diseases, disease where the alpha light chain of antibodies, they form these aggregates and they bind where you don't want them to. Anyway, so the company Prothena uh, seems to have this, this good method of doing it. And Celgene saw an attractive... Um, opportunity here and, and they started this collaboration so uh, Celgene which is sort of a big company that's kind of been stagnant lately I'd say and it looks like they're looking to expand their uh, their pipeline by bringing in these these smaller companies that have a lot more going on for them and they're at the earlier stage so they have this uh, Juno collaboration to try and get into CAR-T and uh, Celgene is now getting involved in uh, Prothena so the offer is they get Prothene has been given $100 million up front and a $50 million equity investment. And potential future payments can be up to actually $2.1 billion. So this could be a gigantic uh, headwind for Prothena if they're able to deliver on what they, what the, the terms of the offer are. And we don't know actually all the terms of the offer, but what we do know is, uh, is, is pretty attractive if... Prothena can actually finish these phase one trials for the certain uh, antibodies against specific proteins. So in exchange for this collaboration, Celgene gets exclusive rights to license the clinical can candidates in the U.S. at the IND phase after phase one completion. And they also have the right to expand internationally, which is obviously huge. And uh, Prothena will get a, ro a share of the um, sales through royalties uh, if, if these drugs reach market. So definitely uh, puts an incentive on Prothena to develop these and get them through uh, phase one. And so the proteins in question, let's see here. Uh, okay, we'll get through this later. But the proteins that are the disease, I guess they're proteins, they're monoclonal antibodies raised against certain proteins and not just the endogenous protein, but the aggregate problem protein. So tau, which is involved in a lot of different diseases, but the main one is Alzheimer's disease. Uh, TDP43, which is important in ALS. And uh, what is this disease? Frontotemporal dementia. Okay. Um, so obviously these diseases don't have very great cures right now or treatments. Uh, for Alzheimer's disease, I did a post on that with... Uh, I forget what the drug was called. Anyway, it was a uh, late late last year I did a blog post so check that out if you're interested I get into more detail about Alzheimer's disease but all the treatments right now none of them actually treat the underlying disease they only treat the symptoms which is not ideal if you're trying to stop the actual uh, pathogenesis of the disease um, ALS there's nothing really great for it either but this TDP43 protein has been implicated and uh, it's an RNA binding protein that uh, yeah I, you know that's enough but the the problem is that these proteins form aggregates, and if you can stop the aggregate formation or somehow, then uh, seemingly you could improve the disease outcome. So uh, it's up to Prothena to develop these antibodies against tau and TDP43 so that uh, the immune system can come in and recognize these proteins as being foreign, and then they can uh, uh, ingest them, do what macrophages do, and break them down. So that's the whole uh, point behind this. So with the, the their pipeline right now, these antibodies stimulate the native immune system to attack these proteins that are causing problems. So this NeoD001 uh, binds to these uh, aggregates, protein aggregates, that, that lead to the native immune system coming in and degrading the proteins that are causing the problem. So for AL amyloidosis, they've seen good data, and uh, they have two studies going on right now. We're expecting data for the phase 2b in uh, Q2 of 2018, so that's something to be coming up. Whereas the this vital study isn't going to be until the end of 2019. Uh, PRX002 is for Parkinson's disease, and they're not going to see any data from that until 2020, and that's a Roche collaboration and PRX004 in ATTR amyloidosis. Uh, they're starting a phase one trial in 2018. So 
they're they're not really a later stage clinical trial company they're very much at this discovery phase and that's where they seem to be most uh, that's where their skill set seems to be so it's good that they have this collaboration with a company that uh, is better at the later stages because this company does not have the the money to take these these compounds all the way through and and risk losing all, all their money that they have so um, things to pay attention to regarding that is they have 42 million bucks in cash which is pretty good uh, it'll allow them to to be solvent for quite a while they uh, they're spending about 35 million dollars per quarter so and this is before the cell gene deal so this is going to be uh, increased by the by now since we're in like almost Q2 of 2018 so this is encouraging at least to see it gives them a chance to to bring a lot of these preclinical drugs that we see here to the uh, to, or the, in the discovery phase to the preclinical phase and actually get them in humans so that's going to be where we want to see them uh, before Celgene takes them into phase two and phase three okay so it, it does seem like they're good at bringing these drugs to the the preclinical phase one stage and uh, they they've been successful and they've been unsuccessful so they had a drug uh, PRX003 fail in Q3 of 2017 that was at phase one so that that wasn't good but uh, you know it hasn't dissuaded them from pursuing other ones um, and it doesn't necessarily mean that there's anything uh, inherently bad with the science behind it one of the things that that did make me a little bit nervous about this company is uh, Sarah Noonberg who was the CMO resigned in earlier this year and actually let's just take a look at the stock so uh, the failure of the trial was in September, and you can see this downtrend here where they were up at around 67 and fell to about 57. And then Sarah Noonberg resigned in February of this year. So you can see they were at 42, 45, and dropped down to 30. And then uh, earlier this week with the cell gene news, they, they hopped up from 34 to 38. So, yeah. So the, the value that this stock price gives the company is about $1.2 billion market cap. And, uh, you know, they were, they were almost double that in late 2017. So I think the, the sell gene deal is, uh, is very hopeful and leaves a lot of upside for the company. I think realizing that they have all of these potential milestones that they can reach is, uh, is very attractive to the company and actually going to push them pretty far in this. Um, I noticed that they actually have been publishing a lot too, which is encouraging. So they, they've made a lot of publications on these different uh, compounds that they have, uh, which is encouraging from a scientific perspective and also uh, just, you know, sort of means that they're uh, interested in, in making a scientific contribution and, uh, and showing that they're a mechanism behind their, their efforts here. So uh, another thing is that just from a long-term perspective, if none of these things work out, but they have a good means of getting these antibodies, there's a lot of different uh, path pathologies, I guess they call them proteopathies, involved in uh, protein aggregate diseases. So this Wikipedia has a gigantic list of them where amyloidosis or just amyloid protein aggregates cause disease. So if things don't work out great for them here, I think as long as they're able to be funded for different diseases like this, they have a lot of long-term potential. But in the short term, I think um, them bringing these specific uh, monoclonal antibodies to the clinic would be great. So there was also an undisclosed protein. So there's two proteins, the tau, the TDP43, and one that's undisclosed uh, involved in the cell gene deal and we can actually sort of speculate on what it would be so other proteins that are interesting is uh, a beta is involved in alzheimer's disease and um, yes they don't have a thing here but it could be that one or it could also be this alect 2 which is involved in these in a renal and uh, a liver amyloidosis so 
uh, it could be this too. So it's obvious that it's it's some sort of monoclonal antibody since this is the company's specialty. Okay. Is there anything else I wanted to check? Oh, so actually, uh, everybody should check out these videos. I know it's probably cheese to show this, but uh, they have really cool videos on their website that show how the uh, how the thing works. And it's you know it's a obviously an artist rendition, but it's uh, the videos are pretty neat. And so this is for their Neo D zero zero one. They show how the they get binding of okay, so the heart cells. And uh, this is their drug. It comes in, it binds, and then the uh, the macrophages are going to be able to recognize it since it's uh, it now the macrophages can identify the antibody properly, and uh, and then it eats it and breaks it down so it doesn't cause the problems that you see. So kind of a cool thing on, on their website to, to check out. Yes, so other than that, yeah, gonna wrap it up. Kind of a short video today, but uh, I, uh, or actually I tell you my position. So I don't have a position in the company yet. I'm gonna wait for the phase 2B trial to finish in Q2 because uh, right now this is, this Neo D001 is kind of their baby right now. And uh, if they show negative data on this, it's not going to be very encouraging for their phase three trial. I'll just uh, put that up the timeline. So like I said, we're expecting in Q2 of 2018 to see the uh, results from oh, whatever. I'll just talk about it. So waiting until Q2 to see the actual results from the uh, phase two trial here of Neo D001, and uh, the the phase three is kind of hasn't really um, it's it's ongoing, so so we'll see. But if the phase two doesn't look good, then it's not going to look very good for them. And I think there's probably some downside for the the business there. So if the phase two looks good, then uh, then I'm probably going to take a position, probably a small position to start, given how volatile the stock is and how volatile the entire stock market is right now. Um, it's hard to predict where we're going to go as, a, as an entire market from here, but I think uh, long term, I see some potential in the company. And uh, when I do put a position on, I'll, I'll definitely share and, and post an update. So with that, guys, I'll, I'll leave you to it. Thank you very much for watching and uh, leave me a comment. Let me know what you think about everything. I try to respond to comments when I can. And uh, click subscribe and hit like. It would be great. And uh, yeah, follow me also at uh, Matthew Lapoire on Twitter. And, uh, and I have a Reddit account as well. All right, guys. Thank you very much and see you next time.